that did it for me. I, I love it. it. I love, I love it. it. And it, it gives me that buzz. buzz. It feeds exactly what exactly I want to do. <laughs> Hi friends, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're doing well. As you may notice, I am now back home. For those of you that don't know, I lived with my boyfriend's family a bit in lockdown and obviously we can't go back and forth between houses. So we lived there for a couple months and now we've moved back into my house. So I'm back with my bugs. You already know. I recently finished all my uni work a couple days ago and it's put me into a reading slump. So what I thought we would do is I'd recommend some books for you if you're in a reading slump. I've seen quite a few people at the moment saying they're in a bit of a slump, but these books are just easy books to read that you'll wanna just fly through and I love them all dearly. I'm hoping this is gonna get me out of my slump vicariously by recommending these books. <laughs> Old me a couple weeks ago was like, oh my god, as soon as I finish my uni work, all I'm gonna do is read. And then, apparently not. Before we start, make sure you subscribe if you haven't already and hit the like button. Also hit the bell so you're notified of whenever I post because why wouldn't you? I'm actually getting really close to 3k and I want to do something really really fun for 3k so let me know down below if you have any ideas. So the first books I have to recommend I don't think it will be any surprise that it is the Heartstopper graphic novel series. Come with something new. Do something fucking different. This series is everything to me. <laughs> I adore these books. I love them so much. Everyone always says, Megan, you speak about these in every video. And I'm like, why not? If a book is great, I want to shout about it. In the House of a Graphic Novel series, we follow Nick and Charlie as they essentially fall in love. It's not a spoiler. <laughs> you know what you're getting into when you start this. But it's just the story of them being young and in love and figuring themselves out. It also deals with very heavy topics or important topics. So volume two is very much about Nick coming to terms with his sexuality and figuring out what his sexuality is. And then number three is about Charlie struggling with his relationship with food and eating. So they definitely tackle difficult topics, but they're graphic novels. So sis, you're gonna be flying through these. I read them in like an hour to two hours. And Alice Oseman just does something brilliant with these characters. Alice Oseman is really great with characters I think that's shown through like the popularity of Radio Silence for example but Nick and Charlie just do something to me <laughs> and when you read it they have the cutest facial expressions in the world oh my god I cry <laughs> I think graphic novels in general are great to get you out of a reading slump that you finish something really really quick and like okay I'm on the move. I'm on a roll. <laughs> I'm on a roll. <laughs> and so I'd recommend any that you have in your collection, but if you have been thinking about picking up the Heartstopper series, it's time. So definitely, definitely have me pick up Heartstopper if you're on a reading slump. It'll get you straight out of it. You'll want to cry. You'll love. You'll just love these characters and love the journey that they go on in their relationship. I laughed. I cried a number of times. I sweat. I danced. I got... A shot, I ate, and I had many epiphany. And also, if you're from the UK, it's set in like a UK high secondary school, and it took me back. Like the vibes, it was just how I remembered it. There's so many little touches in this graphic novel series that just like elevate it beyond any other graphic novel I've read. Like it, it's out of this world. Alice Oseman. We stand. She's a queen, an icon, a legend. <laughs> My next recommendation has to be Wilder Girls by Rory Power. Now I know this is a bit of a controversial one because not everyone seems to love it, but I <laughs> loved this. This was like a 4.5 to me. It was so close to being a five star. In this we're following a group of girls at a secondary school where the tox has taken over and a lot of the girls are either dying or they are kind of mutating in some way. And we follow three girls, Reese, Byatt and Hetty, as their kind of best friends, but then one of the girls goes missing and the other girls are like, well, we have to go looking for her. So that's what they do. 
and so much happens. It's a kind of like a conspiracy, mystery, freaky book. It's so good. I said recently, I was doing a live show with some of my friends. Someone asked like, what book would you love to see turn into a film or like a TV show? And I would love this to be like a Netflix TV show. I think with the gore and the freakiness, it would just be so good. The vibes of this book are honestly unparalleled. Like no one is doing it like Rory Power. <sighs> it just hit me. <laughs> the eeriness and ah, uh, it's just so good. There is a section where I'm not gonna say who, but one of the girls were following her POV and she's kind of like drifting in and out of consciousness and it's written in a really weird way and I just that did it for me. I, I love, love it. it. I love, I love it. it and it, it gives me that, that buzz, buzz. It's, it feeds it's exactly what I want to do. <laughs> it's short and the font is big so listen it's not going to take you that long it's a quick eerie weird read and I think this is just perfect to get you out of reading slump. I think it's just what the gals are looking for. <laughs> But honestly, if you've heard bad things about Wilder Girls, I would honestly pick it up because I loved it and I can't wait for everything else Rory Power puts out. I just think in terms of the atmosphere of it, it was really, really unique and not like something I'd read before. Now, the next book I want to recommend is an old favourite. I haven't spoken about this in a while, but it is Girls of Paper and Fire by Natasha Nyang. So this is like a top tier book for me. I gave it five stars. I didn't love the second one as much. I don't think anyone really loved the second one as much. Did I lie? Did I lie? Did I fucking lie? This really ignited a love for reading for me at the time. This was before I had my channel and I remember I bought it in Florida. I went into a Barnes and Noble and there were loads of books I'd picked up that I'd wanted for ages. But this one I kind of picked up on a whim. I'd heard Kayla mention it once and it was the first book out of that collection I picked up and it just stirred something in me. I think if you're looking for fantasy that will give get you out of your reading slump, this is quite a unique fantasy in terms of the topic. We're following a group of girls who are forced to have sex with the king. They are of the lowest cast cased. Oh my god, everyone gives me grief. Everyone always gives me grief for getting the wrong one. Cast or case? It's cast. But they are of the lowest kind of group in society. The king is of the highest. One thing I think Natasha did brilliantly in this is show the girls different reactions to that trauma. Some get filled with anger, some go into depression, some try to act like everything's fine and some fall in love with the person who is abusing them. And I think she really did that so, so well in a really natural way, but showing all these girls have different reactions to such a terrible situation. And we follow particularly Lei, her story is told kind of from her perspective. And she ends up falling in love with another of the paper girls. And it's the story of their love. It's the story of finding love in such a horrible situation. And the world seems so, so vivid to me. Sometimes I read fantasy. Like, I recently read the whole Shadow and Bone trilogy just so I can get around to Six of Crows and Crooked Kingdom. And for me, that world felt very uncompleted. It felt like I never knew the wider world. You know what I mean? It didn't feel vivid. Whereas in this one, I feel like I know so so well the fantasy world that we are in and the way the power dynamics work and shift in this world i think it's oh it's just so good really really give this a go if you haven't already i know it's like a favorite for some people but i feel like not many people are picking this up now to continue reading it i still haven't taken my sticker off whoops <laughs> hey cool. flop girl you have done it again constant lowering the bar for us all and doing it flawlessly I'd say I'm surprised, but I know who you are. I've seen it up close and personal. Girl, you make me so ashamed. You'll fall in love with these girls. You'll fall in love with so many of the characters and ah, oh, it's just so, so good. So there's something just so, so magical and special about it that I think it's really unique in terms of the YA fantasy genre. I feel like it's really pulling on emotions and topics that not a lot of YA fantasy is covering at the moment so I love it. And then the next book I think would be great to pull you out of a reading slump if you are in one is Clap When You Land by Elizabeth Acevedo. So this has literally just come out so if you're a gal who loves to read new releases then this is the one for you. I literally just read this in last week's vlog so I'll link that up above if you want to check it out. <laughs> so if you don't know Elizabeth Acevedo's books are told in verse so if I just give you an idea of one of the pages 
that's what it's going to look like and so it reads so fast so if you're looking for a book to pick up that will literally just like be so quick to read then this is perfect for that in this we follow two girls whose father dies and then they find out that they actually had the same father he had kept both of them secret from one another and it's the story of them coming to terms with their grief coming to terms with their loss and learning what this new discovery how that impacts on them and who they are as a person i think what was so great about this book is you see them both come to terms with the fact that they loved their dad they loved their dad so much but he wasn't a perfect person he had flaws he made mistakes he hurt people in his life and to see them coming to terms with that is really really powerful in my opinion we feel like we're in the girls' heads and oh my god okay oh my my eyes got blurry then <laughs> At the end of the day, all I want to say is thank you, Lady Gaga. <laughs> it doesn't have a lot of plot, so you've got to be okay with that. You've got to be okay with not a lot happening, but it's very focused on them as characters, on them as people, and them making journeys in themselves in a very short space of time. Not a lot happens. Like, you've just got to be okay with that going into it, but in terms of something that's going to be a quick read, that's going to get you out of your slump, sometimes I think a book that A, will read very quickly because it's told in verse, but B, will make you feel emotions because you are so tightly connected to these characters is just what you want. You know what I mean? Sometimes you want something that's really fast paced in terms of plot, and sometimes you want something that just really makes you feel something, really makes you connect and I think that's what this book does so pick up any Elizabeth Acevedo I still really want to read with the far and high I've read this and the poet x but I think she's a great author to like a book that is a bit of a palate cleanser a book that is fast paced in terms of the writing style and a book that really touches on important heavy issues and makes you feel so connected to her characters and then the last book I want to recommend is a YouTube favorite but I think sometimes reading a book that maybe you've been putting off I don't know who's been putting this book off, to be honest. This is why I left it till last, because I think most of you will have read it. But sometimes reading a book you've been putting off that is a really hyped book, so you've seen a lot of people you like talk about it, is great. So, The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. In my opinion, there is not a better book to get you out of a slump than this book. I think the way that it's told, the way we come to understand Evelyn, and the way that it's structured in the sense that you kind of learn her life through each of the seven husbands, it keeps the story really structured and moving in a way that I think is helpful when you have a slump, because it gives you clear objectives. Like, you can, like, be like, oh, I'll I'll read to the end of the next husband <laughs> and it keeps the story moving at a really great pace so in this we're following Evelyn Hugo who is telling the story of her life to a really small journalist Monique and Monique is like girl why did you pick me to tell your story and that's part of the mystery in itself but we're learning the life of the infamous actress Evelyn Hugo and basically the seven men she was married to and who the love of her life is ah oh, kills me every time Taylor Jenkins Reid is brilliant for getting out of slumps because her books are just books you want to devour. I remember I read Evidence of the Affair by her which is like a 70 page novella kind of thing and I just devoured it in like half an hour. That is also brilliant if you're in a slump reading a really short, oh my god my voice, uh, reading a really short novella just spices things up. The flavour, oh my god it just, it's so real like and that book is spicy that's told through letters between two people who discovered that their other that their partners respectively are having an affair and it's them talking oh my god the tea the tea is strong in that one but in terms of the seven husbands that Evan Hugo I, I mean I don't really say much about it everyone loves it but Evelyn is one of the most well-rounded characters that I have read in a long time Taylor Jenkins really is a master at her characters being so complex well-developed having motivations that you may not agree with and being flawed characters but kind of admitting to their flaws and I just love it so I don't want to spend too long on it because I don't want to live on it but if you haven't this is the perfect thing to get you out of a slump like literally go pick it up now pick up the audiobook pick up the ebook pick up the physical book if it's sitting on your shelf and you still haven't read it so there we have it that is all the books I recommend to getting out of your reading slump let me know down below what some of the books you think would be great to get out of a reading slump are because lord knows I need the help. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed the video and I will see you very, very soon with another one. Bye.